I want to talk about one of, I don't know if it was it the scariest thing you've had to investigate, the Stanley Hotel. Yeah, that, I mean, that place was amazing up in Estes Park, Colorado. And uh, I mean, Stephen King stayed there, and that was the premise behind uh, The Shining. So oh. uh, that's because he, he ended up getting lost one night, and came, you know, after uh, having a night of drinking down in the bar. And uh, that's where he uh, ended up coming up with the whole concept of The Shining. So because I mean, he was already place. an author at that time. Right. Because I was like, well, how did they let read up a little bit on it? And I said they let him stay in the hotel as the only guest with his wife or his family. I'm like, well, how did that happen? But I guess he was already a famous author at that point. He was, he was. And also they were just getting ready to close the place down for winter because at that point it had no heat. So, um, but it's an incredible place built up on, uh, in, in the mountains in Estes Park. And we, we've been there. I've been there probably a total of uh, maybe 15, 16 times. Uh, the first time we stayed there, we were there for a couple of weeks filming, trying to see, just catch some of the things that so many claims uh, that go on in the place. In, in my room alone, I mean, I had a closet door open, uh, unlatch and open on its own, close on its own. I had a glass shatter from the out from the inside out. Um, so it was really, really weird. And that was like four days into it. And I had to sit there and think, well, I'm going to be staying in this room for at least another uh, 10 days, which. OMG. Yeah. All right. So we we have some of that. We have um, a clip. So some of these work visually and some of these work better in terms of audio. It depends. So the first one, I think, works on both levels. And this is listen for the voice that Jason and his partner Grant hear uh, while they're inside the Stanley Hotel. That would become the basis for The Shining. How far back does it go, G? You heard it? I heard that. Just said hello. Hello. I know. I heard it. Who are you? Shh. There it is again. I got it on audio. You do? You want to see if I can hear it? Yeah. Listen. Listen. Holy. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. Guys, what is going on? Can't hear that was a laugh. Whoa, you could hear that. Where, where, where was that? Where were you guys going there? That was actually in the employee entrance down in the, in the basement of the Stanley that uh, is, they've cut through part of the mountain so that, because the Stanley's built on it. And uh, that was during a live show that we did. We did a six hour live Halloween show there and had that, I mean, and the place is locked down so we don't have to worry about contamination or anything like that. But during the live show that happened, and I mean, it was amazing to catch yeah, that so live and everybody to experience it at the same time we were experiencing it. On that front to the doubters out there who say, oh, that was a member of your team or that was a member of the production crew trying to add flavor so you'd have something what say you honestly i'm not here to argue with them uh, they can believe if they if they want to doubt it they're going to find something to doubt anyways so um all i can say is we caught this there was nobody else there it was on live tv and uh, it was one of the most incredible experiences that we've ever had to have mm. it live w- it was amazing so i mean each person's going to find somebody's if somebody doesn't want to believe they're going to find fault in in anything you put out there so yeah uh, teach their own but i'm clear conscious here because I was there. I was, I was able to experience it firsthand. Now we have another clip from that same visit, the Stanley hotel involving a closet door. This, um, this is a little bit more visual than audio, but stay, stay with me, uh, my listening audience, because I'm going to explain to you. He's alone in his room. Jason is at the Stanley hotel. You're going to hear the closet door open. And then they're they're talking about a glass breaking and you can see the glass, which I'll describe to you when we, um, when the clip ends, listen. He's in his bed. Open. What's that? I'm not sure what happened. I heard the closet open. Turn on the light for you guys. The closet, the closet door is open. glass actually broke. Here's a piece. I guess I won't be drinking on that one anytime soon. That's crazy. At the very end, Jason picks up this glass, like a, something you have a cocktail in, like a, an actual glass. And um, 
a slice of it, like an upside down tri triangle has come out of the glass and you can see it on the side of the table. So that had not been broken prior to you going to sleep. No, it hadn't. It, it had been sitting on the table next to the bed and you can hear it break. If you, if you listen, I mean, you can literally hear it break from the inside out, which is amazing. You can hear the, the clank and then it fall. Um, Again, and then later on in the night when the camera was still rolling, I had turned the camera to face the closet because, I mean, the closet door just opened and it was later on. I'm not sure how much later, but the door closed and latched itself all on mm -hmm. camera. And you're able to you're able to see that there's no there's no wires. There's no strings. There's no manipulation. I mean, this happened right on camera. What does that tell you? It tell, first off, it tells me that there's an intelligent spirit there because it's manipulated. So there's a difference between when it comes down to hauntings, you have intelligent, I mean, you have human and, and inhuman type spirits. Inhuman are things that have never walked the earth in human form. Whether you believe in demonics or angelics or elemental type activity, those would fall under inhuman type spirits. Then human type spirits, you have an intelligent or residual and poltergeist, nothing like the movie though. Um, so an intelligent is like you and I, after we pass, we're trying to communicate We're we're tugging on people's clothes, poking, moving small objects and which creeps people out. Um, then you have your residual type haunt, which the, the best way to be, think of it as a tape player, rewinding and playing itself over and over again. If I live in an old house and I decide that this doorway I'm going to cover up and put the doorway down there, but a residual haunt is there. The residual haunt is now going to still follow that same path and walk through now what what's a wall, which used to be the doorway because there's no intelligence to it. It's just like a tape player um, where an intelligent spirit is going to know the difference and be able to walk through the new doorway. So that would tell me that there was some sort of an intelligent type haunt there because it was manipulating objects that were around me that I had brought into the room mm -hmm. Um opening and closing the doors, which isn't just a residual sound, but literally movement of things moving. And I mean, there was some spooky talks about in history. They talked about uh, one of the people who owned the Stanley Hotel prior to uh, the Stanleys and he used to hide in the closet and watch people sleeping and go and steal their jewelry while they were sleeping. So creepy. Um, definitely some weird stuff. <laughs>